All right. Hi. Thanks for coming on. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, it's good to be here. Uh, so I, I followed you back in the day when I was first getting into, into Bitcoin. Well, when you say the day, oh, you mean 10 years ago. Uh, it wasn't that far back, okay. unfortunately. I, I, I started wish... writing about it in uh, about 2012. Amazing, yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I got I got into crypto like late 2013, early 2014. Okay, 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 yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. Uh, that's uh, a little, little later than I was, but yeah. you know, but I mean, those are hard times, right? Because you couldn't find anything online that was really explaining it well, yeah. at least not in non-technical terms, you know. Uh, so a lot of what I wrote about it in those times was trying to explain crypto to to uh, you know. I would say to non-technical audiences, you know. And you, you were on the forefront, I think it's fair to say, because you were already interested in these ideas of, of, of sound money, uh, you know, yeah. non-fiat alternatives to money before right. crypto even existed. Well, that's right. I fell in love with, uh, well, I got super curious about monetary theory when I was in college. Reading about the history of the Weimar inflation, I just realized something really important that the quality of a money can make a difference to whether and to what extent you have a function in society or, or society devolves into uh, despotism, you know, as it happened after the Weimar inflation. So I thought, well, that's not so obvious. You know, it's, it takes some, some reading and some explaining. Uh, so, yeah, I dedicated myself to that cause. So it's, the whole subject of sound money has been really important to me since I was about 20 years old. And then, so how long did and, it take? And, and now that I'm 27, that's seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so how long did it take you from when you discovered Bitcoin to to realize or believe in it and and feel like it's it actually yeah. might be the solution that you were hoping for? Well, it took me a long time because I think I was reading about this. I mean, my first email I received about about this was in uh, I think it would have been right. t t October 2010. A uh, graduate student at MIT wrote me about it, and I just couldn't figure it out. I just wasn't on the right mailing list, Jesus. Yeah, right, right. Well, his name is Satoshi. No, <laughs> um, but no, he. <laughs> but it took me. So I didn't. I didn't. I was incredulous for a long time because because the problem with the internet is that everything is copyable, and you can reproduce anything that's digital. You know, and I couldn't really see that there were any successful technologies for securing. I would say like. Um, ownership rights over a, uh, over a piece of digital property uh, because those rights could always be uh, copied or hacked. You know? That's why I ignored it. I heard about Bitcoin er, much earlier than when I got into it, but I ignored it thinking it was just another attempt at yeah, yeah. digital gold without the yeah, decentralized network. I was the same way and because I had seen something like you know half a dozen failed attempts. Uh, but once I discovered um, a blockchain and dubbed key cryptography, and, and how those uh, p play together, the, the ledger technology, the documentation the technology, and the protocols that, are, that, are, that, that strictly govern. And also the, the, the fact that it's a d d distributed ledger, you know? And so when that clicked, um, then I realized it was, it was the real deal. Actually, I must say, I was, I was even writing about Bitcoin like in a way that was, a, I was already a believer before I really understood why I had become a believer, because I had seen it work, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, and it and it astonished me. So I was writing about it uh, already pretty early on, but then gradually, you know, I read a book on cryptography. You know, I, I started really studying up on distributed ledgers, and and uh, and then once you kind of put all that together, and there's a lot of moving parts. You know, like intellectually speaking, it's not so easy. I mean, you have to understand, you know, cryptography and ledger technology and to get, to get the internet, you know, information economics, you have to understand economics, the monetary economics. There's a lot of things you have to know to be able to put all the pieces together to understand uh, these. And so it took me a while because, I, you know, I was schooled on the monetary economics side, but not so much on the, on the more uh, difficult uh, technological idiosyncrasies of Bitcoin technology. So that took me a while. Yeah, yeah, same here. Yeah. So I'm actually I'm a, a patent attorney by training. I, I don't practice patent law, um, so I like to think I've applied some of that uh, knowledge or, or or trade towards my understanding of crypto. And so I, when I view the Satoshi Nakamoto white white paper, and I look at other things like uh, Monero's white paper. Um, I boiled it down to what I saw as being the invention, and for me, it's really censorship-resistant uh -huh. uh, digital cash. Uh -huh. 
do you do you view it the same way when you uh, kind of boil? Yeah, down there's a lot of there's a lot of a lot of ways to describe it, but I like that one. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah. And then so that's what led me to Monero. So uh, I, I kind of had two eurekas in the space. First was understanding Bitcoin, and we're like, wow, a decentralized network. Never even thought this was possible. Right. Solve the Byzantine generals problem. Right. And then my my kind of my second eureka was when I realized that Bitcoin was completely traceable and trackable. Uh-huh. Uh, because of its nature, it's, mm-hmm. transpa- it's literally a transparent ledger that's, mm-hmm. that anybody can view at any time. Mm-hmm. And that's what led me to Monero. What, mm-hmm. Did you ever uh, go through anything like that in terms of... Uh, well, not so much about the dealing with the, this, the not, uh, pseudonymity, pseudonymity versus anonymity. I, I, I was always, so I've always been in favor of, of uh, as much diversity and competition within the crypto space as possible. I've never ever been a what what is now called a maximalist you know uh, uh, but even those debates were around I, I, I held a conference in October of 2013 in Atlanta it was called the cryptocurrency conference probably another the second one in the United States uh, second conference on Bitcoin it was an academic conference really but those debates were already going on then because I was in favor of um, as much diversity and innovation in the space as possible but there were other people there who were like oh no that Bitcoin is you know the final thing it's the only thing that really matters and nothing could ever improve on it and I was like I don't I don't believe that I mean I feel like Bitcoin itself is an improvement so why couldn't you expect more improvements from there so I've always been a uh, always in favor of as much experimentation as possible so I, I like the the world of crypto with you know 10,000 tokens out there I think it's fantastic how about purely from a money perspective right so you, you look at you look at Bitcoin and you can you can say well it's it's not fungible, and because of that, it's it's not good money. It's flawed. It's not digital gold. Do you make that assessment at all, or do you? What sense would you say Bitcoin's not fungible? I mean, it's certainly fungible with other cryptos. You mean the off ramp? Well, because of its transparent ledger, oh. coins can be blacklisted. Oh, yeah, yeah, coins yeah, yeah, yeah. can be marked, and that's because true. of that, not every coin equals every other coin. Mm, yeah, it's interesting. I hadn't really thought that much about it, but I think that's very. And fortunately, I think you know the, the competitive environment now. If that does turn out to be a problem, we we have to have alternatives. I mean, I was myself uh, stunned in 2015 when uh, Bitcoin became unfamiliar to me because of the, the scaling problem. And I mean, that was a strange time for me because it was clear that we were on the verge of huge adoption uh, all across the planet. And, and that was deliberately, as far as I can tell, throttled uh, by the uh, refusal to allow the thing to scale. That people have their reasons. Lightning Network was still in development and so on and so on. But but I saw it happening. I thought we could have really made a difference, and then it had to wait because you know once crypto became slower and more expensive mm-hmm. to use uh, than than credit cards, you know you've got a marketing problem there. Mm-hmm. And, and well, that that's when it kind of pivoted to digital gold. Uh, that's yeah, that's like right. You don't need to spend it every day. In fact, you don't yeah, need. Yeah. Hold it, never it. expend it. Yeah, not only that, but don't adopt it, right? They were, they became a, they, that if within that community, they were against adoption, you know, and it was certainly against use. So there was a very strange change in the ethos at that time. And sure enough, that was the same time when technologies like uh, Venmo started really taking over. Mm-hmm. You know, they made a, a big difference, you know, uh, and because people were looking for an alternative to. Uh, mm-hmm. to just old-fashioned credit cards and things. And so, but so I think Bitcoin really missed its time in the sun but it, you know I think it just delayed things uh, so I was I was I, f- I was for the fork you know when that happened mm-hmm. and and I still believe in that I still think it was the right thing to do mm. yeah. uh, I just got I just want to ask you a little bit more about fungibility because mm-hmm. that's a, a lot of the people watching this is the Monero talk show that's what people are most yeah. interested in do you think fungibility is essential to you know uh, a cryptocurrency or a, a good money or sound money well, I think the the answer is probably yes. Uh, to to what extent that matters relative to other traits, I don't know. I just don't know. Um, I could see that it, it might matter. Uh, it's, it doesn't seem like the first thing that we would have to think about, but it probably it probably does. Fungibility, but, but you know, just so people understand what you're saying, it's like every every one unit is is. Uh, uh, Re, re, you're replaceable with any other one unit. Like an atom of gold always yeah. equals an atom of gold. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You could, you could gold, gold. Melt it back down. Yeah, gold is, would 
be fungible in that sense. Dollars are not fungible with each other because every every dollar is, is marked in a sense. With well, man, dollars. they're fungible by law, right? Mandated by the government, essentially. Yeah, yeah, but the, but every unit is is different and traceable in that sense, you know. So, and uh, I so yeah, I think what's important here is that. Bitcoin was a really brilliant discovery because we discovered that you can use the power of innovation and apply it to money. And I don't think people understood that. Right. I mean, you Thinking think about, about money as a technology. Money as a technology. And that's, that's huge. And, y y you know, you think about it, the dollar, it hasn't improved since, you know, in 100 years. And the only real improvements we've seen over the last 100 years of the dollar have been in payment systems. But that's, that's not the same thing as an improved unit, just because you have an improved payment system. There, within the dollar economy, you've got the dollar, that's one thing, you have this currency, then you've got a payment system that's all run by third parties, you know. Um, the brilliant innovation of um, crypto is it, it t put those two things together mm -hmm. in a way that, like, even Federal Reserve officials today don't even understand that. I mean, they can't conceive of that because that's not what money is supposed to do. Anyway. Bitcoin shows us that you can have innovation, and I expect that innovation to continually uh, go forward. Like I don't believe that we, as intellectuals, or you know, or, or as a, or anybody, can really know what the market will select in the future. But I'm expecting. But now you, you, I'm sure you believe in the network effect as well, though. That will probably s there'll yeah. be some that are much larger that's than that's others. That's always true, but there's ways to break the net network effect too. I mean, that's network effect biases certain results in the market, but it doesn't determine them. Yeah. Uh, first mover advantage, not first mover guarantee. That, that's right, and but you know, I mean, MySpace had a first mover advantage in uh, social media, so you know, or actually, I think there was one that preceded that. So, yeah, but so the network effect is not forever binding, actually. Um, but what matters is that we now have money that can improve and be subject to the laws of entrepreneurship, te uh, technological improvement, and, and, and programming. So in the same sense that we saw huge innovation in the, in the internet generally between, say, 1995 and uh, uh, 2015, you know, a uh, relatively short time and a, a birth of a whole new world, I think we're going to see the same thing happen in the realm of money. And, and, and governments that are trying to hold that back are really just f just standing, at, you know, screaming at the tide. They're not going to be able to stop it. And especially, I find it ridiculous the governments that think they're going to be able to reproduce uh, the, the good aspects right. of crypto Re within the central plan. Yeah, with their own, within their own, with their own products. I think it's, it's basically right. laughable. Right. Yeah. So, but are they united? Let's speak in terms of the United States government. So, do you think uh, they're going to do a good job in allowing these new? money technologies to compete freely or are no. they going to try to stymie innovation yeah, so or effectively not necessarily try to stymie in innovation but effectively stymie it through so regulation as far as i can tell uh, both trump and biden were equally against uh, bitcoin in the crypto space so that they're always constantly plotting to make the thing work the way their old systems work and regulate them according to the way they've learned to regulate money and banking generally this is their drive well, it's just not possible. I mean, they can they can pound that square peg into the round hole all they want, and it's never going to work. So all they're going to do is do injury, and uh, disincentivize use, and then also incentivize people to uh, leave the jurisdiction of the U.S. or actually just go go deeper, you know, deeper within the within the ecosystem. And do you think that will be the direction of the United States government, or they yeah. will hopefully uh, you know evolve with the times? Well, so what? Uh, so so what? What, what seems to be happening is that every time the regulators go after the crypto really hard, they screw up, and then uh, th they drive away exchanges and drive away businesses and, and, and uh, in a way that they... Yeah, I'm from New York, yeah. so... So that happened in New York. So now you see what happened in New York, and so now there's a, little more t there's a lot more tolerance within n New York now than there used to be, what, like what, five, seven years ago. You know, so that was a kind of a learning experience. So I think they threaten a lot, but they, they have, they're having a hard time acting yeah. because there's plenty of places in the world that are, that are crypto friendly, more and more and more, actually. So the U.S. is just hurting itself. But I mean, it's not the first time, right? I mean, this is what, yeah. this is what the U.S. government specializes in. What, what, do you think of the, what do you think of this idea that, you know, Bitcoin is almost becoming uh, 
governments are becoming friendly to Bitcoin, I would always say, or at least the U.S. government, uh, because it's completely traceable and trackable. Mm -hmm. We saw with the recent ransomware hacks, uh, they were able to, to catch the guys. Uh, yeah, yeah. But for Bitcoin, they probably wouldn't have been able to. Uh, those same guys had also asked for payment in Monero, at, I think, at a 20% a, a discount, but they paid they paid in Bitcoin and they were caught. So do you think um, there's some scenario where maybe governments go after Monero, but say Bitcoin is okay? Yeah, I suppose that's possible. Uh, but, you know, that's thinking really ahead. I, I would be amazed if that day ever comes. I, I, I don't know. At least, at least for now. Well, the Bitcoin industry in the U.S. is really, really focused right now on compliance. Uh, and that is not always... I understand for the pur purposes of institutional survival, you know, exchanges and all the various product offerings that are out there, compliance is a huge rule or else everybody goes to jail. Um, but that also, you know, I see it as an intervening stage. Somewhere between here and there, there's going to be this period of, of, of uh, co you know, c compliance first and, you know, cartelization of the industry, which we've seen, actually, in the within exchanges in the U.S. But I see it as an in-between stage. Eventually... You know, crypto is is intended to be a, f a free money, a free in the sense of like free speech. You know, unstoppable in yeah, that way. Unstoppable, thing. yeah. Censorship uh, proof, and uh, um, and it's that's that's what it was structured to be that way. <laughs> so compliance is just I see it as an intervening step, but it's it's not going to be the final stage. I mean, governments are not going to let contr give control of the, of the money anytime soon. I mean, they this is they have to have the money. I mean, this is. The very first thing that governments do uh, since the ancient world is monopolize the money. They gotta have that, or else they can, they lose all their power. They never liked the gold standard for that reason, so they got rid of it for a reason. So, all right, totally agree. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time, man. Right. I hope you enjoyed the coffee. Thanks so much. By the way, you could uh, you can send a tip with Monero to the Guatemalan farmers that we got the coffee from. Oh, good. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Have a good one, man.